Welcome to this lecture. Today we will sp speak about trends and transforms. That is this region of my scheme before. We are looking at some data set where we have measured y of t and we are asking ourselves the question, should we transform the data in any way before proceeding? Should we deal with trends uh, or, and or periodicities in the data? And the question we will look at now uh, is how do you incorporate trends uh, and how do you uh, detect if the data needs to be transformed? So here is an example of data that, that is in need of a both a transform and a trend removal. This is the amount of wine sold in Australia uh, in kiloliters over a couple of years. And what you can see here is that there is a trend in the data. So there is an, a growing amount of wine being sold every year. But you can also see that the amount of variability in the data seems to grow every year. That is typically why you would want to introduce a transformation so that you can get this uh, variability to be stable over time. So in this case of the data, we would first would like to make the data stable and uh, make the trend go away before we proceed to selecting a model for the, uh, the new process that we thus have formed. So to begin, let's discuss trends. So there's two general ways of determining and tr uh, handling trends. It's the, either treating it as deterministic or stochastic. Deterministic is simply that you introduce a model for your trends, for instance that you say that it's a linearly growing trend or that there is some kind of polynomial or something like this, or can, maybe there is a sinusoidal trend to, to display uh, uh, yearly cycles and so forth, but you assume that these are uh, these are uh, known trends that, deter that that depends on some kind of unknown parameters. Say uh, say that you have a linear trend that would just be a one and a zero like this. If you estimate those two, that would capture the linearly increasing trend. These can, these uh, these functions uh, that you can use here can be very general. And so typically, what you do is that you use some prior knowledge about the things that you model. If it's a physical or a chemical model or so forth, you would you would use the 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 knowledge you have from chemistry or from the reactions or whatever you are modeling to try to model it this way. Then the next step would be that you estimate the unknown parameters. We will discuss the estimation part as a separate component later on. And with these components you subtract them and get a new sequence x of t here which is then modeled as what we usually do here. So you assume then that your new process x of t is a stationary process and then the trend and, and the cycles and whatnot is incorporated into this model that you estimate in the first part. The second way of dealing it is that you say that you have a stochastic trend. Basically what you do is that you increase your structure, your ARMA model, to also contain uh, integrating parts. So in this case there is a, what we call an ARIMA. This is a D order uh, ARIMA. So it's, it's differentiating the signal D times. Typically D here is 0, 1 or 2. It's exceedingly rare that D is larger than 2. And I would say that most of the times you would expect D to be typically like 1. So 2 is also rare. So what this will do is that we'll subtract, the, if, you, if you think about it, it if you take, uh, we will normally denote this by a nabla. So nabla y of t is going to be equal to y of t minus y of t minus 1. So it's the difference between two samples. And that will, of course, take away anything that's a linear trend like this, because you will take two samples and subtract off each other when you create the new process. So typically that would be that you create a new process wt, which would be nabla t, and that would then be the differentiated process, and that would then, of course, look something like this if you did that. So this would be y of t, and this would be wt. So, so to deal with a growing trend, this would be enough, and then we would be able to use an arima process. For more general uh, processes, we would like to add a seasonal component so that we have what we call a sarima. The sarima is a very general model. So we will, in the general form, allow uh, a D uh, differentiation, as we did before, but we will also uh, allow for a seasonal differentiation, which is then subtracting off y of t minus s instead of y of t minus 1. So in this way, we can, for instance, model cycles. As you saw in the, uh, in the uh, wine sales, there was, there was typically a, an annual trend with 12 months. This would typically be bottled by having a season uh, of 12, and then you would form the, new, the nabla S so that you would remove this trend, and then you would get a process that would not have this cycle in the data anymore. We can also allow the system to have cycles in the S uh, season, both in the A and the C polynomials. So this is a very, very general model to basically handle anything that you can come up with. 
So let's look at an example. This is this is a data set that we wish to model. And, and the first thing we need to, to, to look at it is to say, well, you can notice, for instance, here that that the the, uh, the mean is not zero. That would be the first thing to notice. Uh, and there is also something like a slowly changing trend in the data, right? There's something that's slowly changing that we would want to model. And then on top of this is this what we would call the say the noise structure that would typically be something we would model by an AR and ARMA or something like that. So if I start by looking at the ACF and the PACF as we've done before, the thing to notice here is that the ACF is decaying really, really slowly. This is a typical signal uh, indication that it needs to be differentiated. So if it if you have this kind of behavior where the ACF decays really, really slowly, you, you should differentiate the data or at least incorporate something that does the same thing in your model. If we look at the AR components here, you can see that we have three uh, big components. One, two, three. So an AR3 seems to be a reasonable model, and I'll get back to that later on, but because as you will see, the differentiation as, as such can be part of this AR3 and might actually be a, a thing we want to do as an AR3 directly without doing the differentiation. So let me begin by differentiating the model. So now I form a new process, Nabla uh, Y, which is just taking the, the samples Y T minus Y T minus 1, like this. And as you see now, I have lost the trend. The big trend that was sort of in the data is now lost and I would have a zero mean process. And if I now look at the ACF and the PACF, you can see that I have this typical uh, ringing behavior in my data. So I have my, my MA is behaving like it's ringing, whereas I have a clear uh, component there and a small component there. So this would be an AR2 typically, right? So my, my W process, should I, I should typically model that as an AR2. So in this case, that would mean this is an ARIMA uh, with the AR component being 2, the differentiation being 1, and there is no uh, MA part. So that would be the model for that. But as I saw, so told you before, we could also use this as, a, as a, the, the differentiation part here is nothing but 1 minus Z to the minus 1. So this part I could combine with the, the two parts, so that's the AZ to the minus one minus A2Z to the minus two. So this is really my AR3 model, right, that I mentioned before. So the, the ARIMA, I can see that just as a way of getting structure into the, uh, to, the, to, the my, uh, to my AR part. And you will also see here that this is basically putting a one as coefficient here. Sometimes you will notice that this is too strong of an assumption and, some, and you would want to actually add a component here. So you would want to put a, a, a say, let's call it a bar there and actually measure that as part of it. But you, this will come back to. But So it doesn't need to be a strict one there. So here is another one. So here my mean seems to be relatively stable, but, but, but you can see that there's still something going on in the data that, that doesn't, it doesn't look stable over time. And if I look at the, uh, at the ACF and the PACF, you can see that there seems to be very strong periodicities in the data. I have the strong periodicity at 7 and 14, and, and, and I would find it again at 21 and so forth. There, is, there seems to be a very strong uh, 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 repeat, repetition of 7. You can see it also in the PACF. So, and if I would look at the spectrum, which would be a good idea, I would then, of course, see a peak, which then correspond to this periodicity of 7. So that seems to indicate that I would want to have a season of 7 in my data. So I will differentiate with a seasonal 7. And as you see then, then I will get something that doesn't have this sort of strange growing behavior. It more look like the kind of noisy process that we are used to. And if I now look at the, uh, the components here on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the ACF, this looks like an MA3, right? So, and, and this corresponds also to this uh, signal being ringing like that. So that suggests that I would want to model this as a Sarima uh, with an MA part that is 3 and a season of 7. So this would be uh, Sarima 0, 0, 3 and season 7 like this. Let's have another example. So uh, here I have a, 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 a clear sort of thing going on this is just not the kind of noise model that we're looking at. There's some some kind of structure uh, some kind of trend, although it is periodic, right? It doesn't mean, it, the, the, when I speak about a trend, it doesn't need to be something that's growing. It's also like this, where it's periodic and changing every every instance. And if I look at the ACF and the PACF, you can see this, that the ACF is decaying really, really slowly. And of course, then I mean the magnitude of it, right? So so 
it is it is moving very very small i i also see that i have a strong periodicity in 4 and in 7 so that makes that suggests to me that that this probably will not work if I just have a fourth component. But as you remember the rule, I would like to try to make as simple as possible model first. So I will therefore try to uh, use a, a fourth order differentiation and look at the result. And if I do that, you'll see I will now have something that looks more like a, a process that we try to model. I will have a ringing behavior in the uh, in the ACFA, as I would expect for something that would be an, a, an AR or an ARMA. And if I look at the, uh, the AR part, I will also have some kind of ringing behavior. But notice that I have a really strong component at 3. That is the 3 that I was seeing before as a component of 7. So notice that if I have an AR3 and I have a NABLA4, that is nothing but an AR7. So that it seems to that seems to indicate that I would want to have a model that would have an, an A7 component as well as an A3 component in it. And maybe I would want to do this by a differentiation of 4, as I have done here, or maybe I would just want to model that where I incorporate these two components uh, directly instead. Okay, we move over to transforms. So as I mentioned before, we could see in this data set that there seems to be some kind of growing variability of the data so that it's, it's, the variance is not stable over time. The way to deal with this is, is to try to find which transformation will make the variance stable. And what you do to do that is that you, you, you formulate the uh, log likelihood, which looks like this, it's a bit of a mess, and then you try to minimize this, to, uh, maximize this, to find which lambda that uh, gives you the best, uh, uh, st best expression that stabilizes the data. And also that is basically saying that you try to make it as Gaussian as possible. So you don't actually have to do this by itself. There is a function that you can use that, that will just plot this function L and it will look something like this. And what you do is you find the peak for this lambda. This is lambda on this axis. And you will say, oh, this lambda is about, say, 0. It sits about 0 here. That tells me that I would want to make it log. And, and typically, we will want to use a log. So log would be the most common thing to do. So, But as you see here, there will be, like, if I move up and the lambda sits at 0 0.05, I would want to use a square root instead. I would argue that that the log is really quite useful. So so we I would use the log for quite a wide range and try it with with that uh, and try with the square root and stuff like more exotic stuff just as a second thing and if this if they didn't work. So log would be my natural choice if it seems to be a uh, need for a transform. So if I look at the wine data here you can see I have the, my this is called a box cox plot and if I plot the box cox plot you can see that it sits actually at 0 0.5 the peak. So that tells me by my previous model that I would want to do a square root. So let's do that for now. And as, as I said it would probably be just as fine if I did a log. But the point here is that notice that I my growing trend that I had here is now gone. I have something that has a stable variance so now I'm able to model this much better than I was before. And as you can see here, that there, the, this is a linear trend, so I can get away with by just using a, a differentiation. But the cycle is 12, so I would want to use a cycle of 12 uh, like this to get the monthly periodicity that I have in my data, which is not surprising since it's a, it's a wine consumption over the year and I have monthly sales. So of course, you know, there's some parts of the year there's more wine consumed and so forth. So I would model it like this. I have a NABLA 12 to get rid of the season, and that works, and that operates on the square root of the data like that. And then I get this sequence on this side here. And here I would like you to notice that the mean is actually non-zero, and therefore I would like to subtract the, the mean as well to create my new model. So my new model W of T, which is the one I would like to use for modeling, should be the one that I have subtracted the mean as well. So if I look at WFT and look at the act for the PACF, I, this is what it looks like. And you can see that I, I have a strong component at 12 in the MA part. And I also have a little bit left of my 12 in my A part. This is really, really common. First of all, since I had a differentiation of 12, it will very commonly occur that I will need to have a C4, uh, a C12 component in my data. So I would like to need, add something like this into my model to deal with, with the peak that I see here in the periodicities. And as you see here, since I have a strong peak left, even though I have differentiated by 12, that seems to indicate that the stability of my model is not so good. So maybe I don't want to use a NABLA 12, rather I would probably want to use something like A12 set to the minus 12 instead of using my uh, 
my nabla 12 this would also take care of it but then of course i need to estimate the a12 components and my hope is then that this would be less than one and that this would make this peak go down a little bit that would be my way forward here but this is, is this is a part where you have to basically move back and forth and see what would make a good model out.